Oh, we so glad to be with you today. We are in the book of Psalms. Many, many of these Psalms were written by David. David was probably in the whole known world from day one when God created Adam until David died. Probably there wasn't any songwriter that could write a better song than David. He's out there tending his sheep. And he has many things in his life happening. He has written some of these songs when he was a very young man. Is maybe as young as 12 years old. And then as he became older and older, he got wiser and wiser. But also what did increase with his wisdom was trouble. Trouble makes you learn. Trouble gives you wisdom. You begin to get more wisdom. The more trouble you got, the more wisdom you begin to get. And you learn how to do it. Uh, when we, a few years back, when I was a young man, and I had bought my first car, an old Chevrolet, and had a little six-cylinder motor in it, and all of a sudden it, it quit on the side of the road. I was able to get out and fool around with it and find out what made it quit. And sometimes the gas tank was empty. Isn't that amazing? I, I know many Christians, their spiritual gas tank is empty. And they're standing beside the road right now. But they don't have what David's got. What has David got? When his gas tank gets empty, he's standing beside the road. What does he do? He pleads against the wicked. In verse 12, he pleaded against the wicked. He played his heart and said, Lord, I'm in this situation right here. And here I am. And then he said, help, Lord, for my godly man causes uh, the ungodly causes uh, me uh, trouble. And then he said, but the godly man is faithful. And he's playing his harp and he's singing it. And it's eight little verses. And then on, in thir Psalm 13, how long, O oh Lord, how long? He's, he's in the middle of a little bit of a situation. How long am I going to have to sit beside the road here, Lord? Is a bear going to come along and get me while I'm sitting here? Help me, Lord. And then in 14, he says, the foolishness of man. So, so I'm broke down, and here comes a guy, and he don't even see me. Wham! He runs into the back of my car sitting there. And, and he's saying, this is where I am right now. I just been hit. I just my car has just been hit. Help me out, O oh Lord. And then verse 50, uh, chapter 15. How shall we dwell in thy holy hill? You or I can say, God, I know how to dwell in your holy hill. You know how to dwell in this holy hill? You have him in your mind and in your heart continually, day and night. You have him in your mind, in your heart, continually, all day and all night. Yesterday, I was able to witness to some uh, 70 or 80 people all in one day. Beautiful day, wonderful day. Left out early in the morning. I walked in the door last night, 7 o'clock, having delivered 80 packages to people, having delivered uh, a message to each person. You need the Lord. If you don't have Him, you need Him. If you do have Him, you need to get close to Him. You need to receive what I'm giving you too as a blessing from God. This is not from me. This is not from my church. It's not from anywhere. This is from God. God has opened the door for this, this for you. Now let's get into Psalm 17. It's a prayer of David. And what's he praying for here? He's praying for protection against the oppressor. Sometimes the oppressor is people. Sometimes the oppressor is right here in your mind. And you allow him to come and oppress you when you don't need to be oppressed. You need to wake up. Hear the right. This is what he says. Hear the right, comma. Hear the right. Hear it right now. You woke up this morning. Now hear it. God's saying in your ear, this is the day that I have made. You need to be glad and rejoice in it. And I say, thank you, Lord. But some people let it come in this ear and go out this ear. There's nothing in between. you got to have some Holy Spirit in your head. You've got to have something in between your ears. 
besides foolishness. And this is, we live living in the day of foolishness. I guarantee it. He said, O oh Lord, attend unto my cry, comma, and semicolon. That means muse. Stop right there. The word is muse. Think about it. Think about what he's saying here. He's saying, Lord, <laughs> I'm here. Hear my cry. And he's singing this now, and he's, he's not pausing a whole lot. He's going on. And then he's saying, listen to this. Give ear to my prayer that goeth not out of uh, foreign lips. Wow. He's saying, I'm not praying with foreign lips. These aren't, these aren't um, foreign lips to you. These aren't deceitful lips. These lips right here are lips that praise you. These are lips that worship you. This, these are lips that speak my heart is for you. And that's what he's saying here. Now, can you say that? Can you get a prayer through? Can you get a prayer through? Can you pray and get a prayer through? And say and, and see it happen. I see them happen all the time. I see them happen day after day after day. I see prayers answered. Prayers happening all the time. Well, Peter, you live, uh, oh, in a nice house with an easy life and all that. I got news for you. I live the same life David lived. And you do too. We live in a world full of trouble. And trouble is at the door, knocking at the door. If he's not knocking at your door, he's probably already come in. And so you've got to exclude him, get him out of there. In verse 2, uh, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Oh, we. What is he saying? He's saying, God, you are present with me. And I want to hear in my heart and in my head what you will give me to sing. And he's playing on his heart now. And he's singing this, this psalm. And as he sings it, he said, Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Wow. He wants a perfect balance in his life. He wants the scales in those days. They had that set of scales and you put something on one side and something on the other and you balanced the scales and you knew that it weighed. If you got two ounces over here, when it comes up level, you got two ounces over here. If you're selling something, if you're doing something. He said, I want the scales to be level in my life. I want the spiritual scales to be level in my life, equal. And, uh, uh, and he's talking about his... He wants his fate, F-A-T-E, fate. What is the fate? That's what's coming down the road. What's coming down the road, he would like, he'd say, hey, Lord, look, I need to keep, please, I want to keep these scales at an even balance. Now, thou hast proven mine heart. Woo! Thou hast proved my heart. Have you allowed God to prove your heart today? Have you said, God, prove my heart today? Thou hast visited me in the night. Woo! Have you ever laid on your bed and just floated? <laughs> Have you ever laid on your bed and just, and just, oh my goodness, the Lord was there, and you, you, you're just, you're, you're just in in perfect peace. Your balance with the Lord is in in perfect harmony with Him. And, and you're there, and your tears running out of your eyes, running down your cheeks, running down your eyes, and you're close enough to God. Do you live close enough to God so when you pull your blankets up over your head, you have light in your life? You see this white shirt? Uh, when I'm, I can pull my blankets over my head, and, it, and I can open my eyes even, and it's as light as this white shirt. Pure light. If God is in your heart and you can get yourself close enough to Him, He'll reveal Himself. When He reveals Himself, He is light. God is light. He is true, unbroken light. He is light. And David knew that. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am uh, proposed that my mouth shall not trans. Grass. Woo wait. He said, Lord, I am careful to not allow my mouth to say a bad thing about somebody. I'm I won't allow my life 
to say words that the devil would say or the world would say. I want my life to say words that are pleasing to you. How you know that, Peter? I'm reading several. I'm down at, at I'm in at number seventeen of his signs, and he's never said anything evil about anybody. He said, God, there are some out here that are coming against me. I'm telling you, nobody else but you. Will you protect me from them? And God did. Who do you think gave David the ability to throw a rock with that sling? You say, well, he practiced and practiced and practiced, and he got to be an expert. I guarantee you, every rock that ever came out of his sling, God was in that rock. God was in that rock. And he, and he did. But by the way, I'm not going to talk about it now, but there's a lot of talk about a rock in the Bible. Uh, concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept, I have kept me from the paths of a destroyer. He said, I have stayed away from violent men. I have stayed away from their path. I have not got in where they are. And you have brought me through, I know, and protected me. And you know, in that day, uh, you could get you. They didn't just fool around. Those marauders that was hiding behind a rock, when you walked by, they came out and knocked you in the head. And while you lay in there as dead, they stripped all your clothes off, left you naked, took every single solitary thing you owned personally, and traced back where you just came from. And find your flock of sheep and took them too. And so you you was in a tough day in that day. It said, Hold up my goings in the path that my foot uh, steps uh, slip not. See? He he's saying, Lord, I'm walking, I'm taking my sheep today to a new new pasture. And and tonight I'm gonna have to come back here because this is where I've got my fold right now. And while I'm going, Lord, don't let me slip, please. Let my steps be ordained by you. You're watching over me. Help me now. And with my sheep and everything. And this is what he's saying. I have called upon thee. For thou will hear me. O God. Incline thine ear. Unto me. And hear my speech. Whew, wow. He's saying Lord. Hear what I say please. And listen to me and help me. I'm asking you. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou, that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise against them. If you follow in God, the devil don't like it. There are going to be those that rise against you, no matter what you do or how you do it. But David is putting all of his trust. Listen to this. Verse 8. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Woo! Man. <laughs> hey, isn't it nice to be the apple in God's eye? You get close enough to it. You'll be the apple in his eye. I can tell you this. Though the worms get in apples. You have to be careful. You have to keep, it, keep the worms away. From your apple. Keep away from the outside so they can't get on the inside and gnaw away at you. So keep them from the outside. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Woo! <laughs> He's saying, God, I know that you're like a big eagle up there. And you're there hovering over me. Your Holy Spirit is hovering over me. Keep me. Keep me so that I I won't fall. So that I will be in your good graces. So that I can be useful to win other men. Compass me about. Oh, excuse me. My deadly enemies who compass me about. Wow. He said, they are surrounded. I'm surrounded. <laughs> he said, I'm surrounded by everything. It seems like everything every day. I'm surrounded by this, these, all these things that are coming at me and everything. But you know what he says? Listen to what he says right here. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth, they speak proudly. They have no uh, comp compassion. 
They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Now, we can see that David knows that where he is, they're all around him. You and I as Christians, we're out here. Uh, not every Christian can see the underworld. And you don't want to see the underworld. Uh, let me tell you, if you please, you don't want to see the underworld. The underworld will scare you to death. Have you ever been around a sure enough, sure enough, crazy person, one that frightens you? That's really what is around us today. Crazy people who are uh, ordered by the devil, who would as soon stab you and take your clothes and uh, or, or, or run over your house or do whatever. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And as it were, a young lion lurking in secret places. Wow. If we went back to uh, Psalm 7 and verse 2, we would see some things David said, but for time's sake, i got to keep going. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him that cast him down and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. This is, he anticipates God taking his invisible sword and uh, Slay. And if you study the Bible at all, and you studied some of the wars, you see that God uh, sent an angel out one night and killed 165,000 with his sword. And uh, uh, one man, one angel, that said, From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. Uh, they are full of children and leave the rest of the substance of their babies. As for me, I will behold thy face in the righteousness. I will, I shall be satisfied when I wait with thy likeness. Well, I don't know how you read that. I see that we are in the day of throwing the babies away. We're in the day of abortion. We're in the day of all I want to do is be pleased night after night and day after day and I don't want to take six months out of my life and give it to a baby, a human life, and have that baby. Let's end that out so I can go back to my pleasures, my physical pleasures, and put your physical pleasures over the life of a baby. We're in that day. David saw this day and that day many, many years ago. This has been a little bit long. There are 15 verses and I've been 18 minutes and I'm going to close it out now. But this is one of the fullest, bestest psalms you'll ever read. When David was singing this, he was as close to God as a man could get without disappearing in the air and just going up and being with the Lord. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.